Hello and welcome to another painting video. Today I'm going to be doing a painting of a bluebird perched on a small branch. I haven't really painted birds that much, uh, so this made a nice change to what I normally do and actually turned out to be a bit of a challenge. So like all my paintings, I start with the blocking in stage. When looking at the reference photo, I can see that there are two levels of vibrancy in the bird. The colours of the wing feathers really stand out, uh, while the other feathers have much more subtle hues showing through. I'm keeping this in mind as I'm locking in, um, so I keep muting the colours on the head and body with greys and browns, while when working on the wing feathers, I use vibrant combinations of phthalo and cerulean blue. Blocking's main purpose is to sculpt the form of the painting. It's about putting the lights and darks in the correct places, and this will start to give it that three-dimensionality, and will provide a foundation that I can later layer over. Right now, I'm not focusing on any detail or any of the textures in the feathers, but I'm trying to break down what I see in the reference photo into big blocks of colour. As I move on to the second layer, I start using smaller brushes to give me a little more control and it helps me to put more refinement in some of the shapes. I'm using this old stiff dag brush and I'm being very sparing with the paint I'm applying. This is creating some lovely textures and is allowing the first layer to show through. Painting feathers is all about layering, so I never want to completely go over what's underneath, but rather slowly build up the tones and colours with all the additional layers. I'm scraping in some deeper blue colours, along with some lighter pinks in certain areas, and this is just tinting the grey tones underneath slightly. While I'm doing this, I'm making sure that the brush strokes I put down match the direction that the feathers are going in. That's probably one of the most important parts to get right, to get it looking realistic. As I move further down, I first put in a few darker marks at the bottom, and this is just to indicate a few of the shadows showing through some of the gaps in the feathers. I'm not worried too much about how they look to begin with, as I'm going to layer over those with some lighter blue and purple colours. Moving on to the wing feathers, I used a dagger brush to put in some more refinement. I wanted to really convey the vibrancy of these feathers, so I don't desaturate these colours that much, and basically use these as they come straight out the tube. This is mainly a phthalo blue and cerulean blue mixture, with varying amounts of ivory black and titanium white added to it. These feathers have a rounded shape to them, and there is a large tone of contrast between the highlighted areas and the areas in shadow. The dark areas are very close to black, and the highlights are pretty much bright white. 
I won't be able to get the tonal range in this layer because of what's underneath, but I can slowly build up to it. To convey the rounded quality of these feathers, there is a deep shadow along the edge and this transitions into the highlight very quickly. This sharp gradient really helps round the edges and define the shapes of these feathers. Now the structure of these feathers is quite complicated, and I'm working on quite a small canvas, so I found it very difficult to put them all in. To work around this, I simplified the complex areas to just put in the main ones, and then lay down varying tones and lines just to indicate that there are many more. With this layer, I really start to lay in some of the detail. I begin with the head and refine the shapes in the beak with subtle blue reflective lights, along with the main highlight along the top. The eye also gets defined, which is basically a solid black colour with a couple of bright highlights. Working around the eye, I can deepen the blacks and layer in more colour on the head. Again, I start with putting in a few shadows first and then layer over these with lighter marks. As I preserved my tones in the initial stages, I can keep layering over with brighter colours and this is increasing the tonal dynamic and allowing these highlighted areas to stand out even more. It is especially important to do this when you are painting things that are white, otherwise it's going to look flat. Working on the wing feathers again, I used a dagger brush to rework some of the tones. Some parts were just a little too dark, and I also used the dagger to add a little more texture to the feathers, so that they don't appear so smooth. It's all still looking quite messy at this point, so I also use a small round brush to sharpen up some of the edges. This is the stage where I really want to increase the tonal dynamic. I layer over the black stripes on the feathers with deeper blue tones, which consist of phthalo blue and ivory black. I don't want these to look as if they're stuck on, so I subtly blend the edges into some of the blues. I also want to burn out the highlighted areas, so I increase the amount of titanium white used in the cerulean and phthalo blue mixtures. This is very close to pure white, but it will still appear on the blue side of the spectrum, because it's surrounded by and blends into rich blue colours. From here on, it's basically more of the same process. Because this is quite a small painting, I don't have room to really get into all of the tiny details. To get a realistic result, it's about creating the illusion of detail, by just hinting at all these layers and textures. I do this by varying the colours I use. Some areas will have extremely vibrant colours, 
while others will have less saturation and intensity. Tonal contrast also has a big part to play and helps separate all the different layers. It's amazing how the human eye will fit in the gaps and create this whole picture just by receiving little bits of information. As I come towards finishing the bird, I use this thin liner brush to mark in some of the white wingtips. I'm using pretty much pure white for this, as these are the lightest points in the painting. This is the part where I can really go in with the brightest highlights. I don't put these in everywhere as they will lose their impact the more I put in, but I do lighten areas on the top of the head as well as doing the glints in the eyes.